20, 28 What minutes. up, dudes? Let's get this party started. Um, Cameron, have a seat. Gino, a seat. Um, I'm just so confused about this because it just doesn't make sense. All right, give me, give me a second. I'm sorry. Um, I need to help out a geometry. You're geometry. in geometry? A geometry kid real quick. Um, are we cool with oh, x yeah. over x plus 10 equals 2? Are we cool with that? Yeah. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Like, well, some of, well, most of the time with math, I, I know that that is the rule. I don't know no, why. No, no, but do you understand how I got here? Uh, because All right, sort fine, of. Fine, fine. Sort of. Fine. Hey, let's help out uh, a, a geometry sooner real quick. Okay. Um, they gave us a, a, a triangle, and they have a smaller triangle inside here. Over here is 8. Over here is 16. This is 10, and this is x. Got it? I see two triangles. Do you see tri two triangles? Yes. These all guys all pass geometry, so then they would be like, yeah. Okay. Two triangles. There's one right here, and big one right here. Yep. This bottom one right here has a bottom length of x and a height of 8. This big one right here has a length of 10. Nope, not 16. 10. X plus 10. I'll try it. And a height of 16. That makes me sense. That keeps tripping me up. I understand why, but I keep forgetting. Well, no, okay, fine. From here is x to, from mm -hmm. here to here is x, from here to here is 10. 10 so it's obvious x. this yeah, thing is x plus 10. X plus 10. Cool? Mm -hmm. So Sophia is saying, what you do is you take ratios. That's absolutely right, Sophia. I could say this divided by that is this divided by that. Mm -hmm. 16 over 8 is x over x plus 10. Therefore, 16 over 8 is 2. Mm -hmm. right. I could have done 8 divided by 16 is x divided by x plus 10. Wait, oops. Oops. I think I screwed it up real quick. Hold on one second. Let me just double check. 16 divided by 8 is equal to x plus 10 divided by x. I had it flipped over. I'm sorry. We cool? Mm -hmm. So you would have gotten the wrong answer because I had screwed up. Ha! Ha! I knew it. Yeah. See, do you see what I did, right? What I accidentally did was I said 16 divided by 8 is x divided by x plus 10. Mm -hmm. No, I need to go here, 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 here. Right? Okay. Anyway, um, this is definitely 2. That's for sure. Yes. Can I say that 2x equals x plus 10? 2x <laughs> equals x. Yeah. Sure. Can I say that? Would you understand how I did that? Kind of. What did I do? I can't explain. I just know that the, the Gino, what did I do? The bottom. From here to here. Sophia's screaming it online. Is this true? What up? Multiply x by both sides. Let's oh yeah, we did that. x. Yeah. X up here. Boom, done. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. uh, x equals 10. You understand what I did? No. Okay. I didn't even see the, the, the 2x. That's why I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know the Minus one. x minus x. So 2x minus x, if I have two x's minus an x, that's just straight up x. What do I have on the right hand side? Oh yeah, one x, I forgot. Yeah. I forgot about the whole, there's a one in front of every There's a one in front of the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Yes, and Sophia, you're absolutely right. You could also go eight over 16 is x over x plus 10. You could, and that doesn't make the math any harder, any, any easier, it's the same answer. Okay? You'll have, you'll have fractions to deal with, you'll have a little bit, you know what I mean? If, but if you use a calculator, there's, there's no challenge to it whatsoever. All right, anyway, that's a good warm-up. A geometry warm-up to an algebra class? Well, it involves some algebra, and obviously my algebra students weren't like kings at that. So, all right, here's what I'm planning on doing. Gino brought up to me that you guys are taking a, 
EOC practice exam. That's worth 52 points. That's worth 52 points. Yes. Yes, it is. Technically, it's not a straight up like final exam. And but this is going to be points. this is going to be like next week Wednesday, next week Friday. It is, however, worth 52 points, which could screw up your grade if you don't do it. It also is a 120 minutes, so it's a, one of the very few timed exams that I give you, and it's a one-shotter. So it is kind of like a final. Kind of. But it says practice. I don't understand. The reason why it says practice is because of this. Pretty soon, you guys are going to be taking an EOC test. And what I wanted to do is get you guys ready for the EOC by giving you some practice. So I want you to practice taking a time test. I want you to practice um, having that constraint of, you know, I only have this amount of time. I want you to practice doing, um, do, I want you to practice uh, only having one shot instead of just guess check, guess check, guess check. It's a multiple choice. And you're right. You're right. The EOC is not a time test. You are allowed to have as much time as you want. Am I right on that? At least for biology it was. For math, I think it's the same. You're right. The EOC is not a time test. If, if you go longer than the time that, you know, uh, the person who's proctoring it has, then they ask you to come in the next day or something like that. Yeah. There's, there's clauses written into that, but usually that guy is willing to stay for like three hours, so it shouldn't, shouldn't really take three hours to do, to do that thing. How many but questions is that? Can, I, I don't remember. Is it like, because like I know our practice only has 26. It's probably got like 50 or 60. Okay. Um, why is the one I'm doing timed? Well, because there are time tests. And if I give you your entire school curriculum and not having time on your test, you're going to really suck when it comes to the ACT and the SAT, which are time, pressure. by the way. You want us to like, right? handle pressure. I want you to handle pressure, but I want you to do it in a practice environment. That's why I'm giving you this. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you. you we're going to go through this test. If you guys all tank on it, you guys should try your best, of course. But if you all tank on it, I'll reset the grade and let you try it again. Okay? I don't think you will tank. In fact, the reason why I don't think you will tank is because guess what we're going to be lecturing on today? What's going to be on the EOC practice test? Yay! <laughs> all right? I'm just going to kind of go through and cover some general math things that I think yeah, yeah, I remember that. That's important. All right, let's see. Here's here's a good one. Um, some of these I'm going to change the problem completely. Some of these I'm going to do very similar problems. I'm going to make up these problems to see if if I can you know get this uh, get an understanding of how to do this. So let's see. I've got one that is a 4x cubed minus 12x squared minus 4x plus 12. And like I said, um, this isn't exactly the same one that's on your, your exam, but it's very similar. I just made it up just now. Hopefully it works. Don't pick that up. I got it. You sure? All right. It wants us to find the zeros. What does When I want to find the zeros, what does that mean? Sophia says factor. You were just raising your hand. You just shout it out, dude. You're right here. Well, uh, you're looking for when the x crosses the line crosses the x axis. Yes, the line crosses the x axis. So we know that it's going to be an x cubed. X cubed in your heads look like this. So potentially there are three intercepts. See, intercept, intercept, intercept. Does that make sense? Can there be two intercepts? I'm just curious to know. On a cubic function. Sure. Mm -hmm. What happens if it crosses the line like that? Intercept, intercept. Can there be one intercept? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah. What if the line crosses there? Then 
It only intersects right here. Does that make sense? So a cubic function can have up to three, no more than three, um, two or one, right? I'm just jogging your understanding of this stuff and causing you guys, hey, remember how to do this kind of stuff? We did this stuff. This was really important, like last year. I think this was like, I remember doing this like second quarter. Yeah. Yeah, and then everyone's like, except I forgot. And well, okay, fine. If you forgot, let's let's go over this. This is good stuff. Yeah. When I want you to find a intercept, I'm actually specifically saying find the x-intercept, as you're saying, cross the x-axis. Whenever we find the x-intercept, what do we do? Set x equal to zero. Wrong. Y equal to zero. You said y equal to zero. If you want to find the x-intercept, you set y equal to zero. If you want to find the y-intercept, you set x equal to zero. Make sense? So y is zero. So y is zero. And Sophia keeps saying factor, 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 factor. Okay, Sophia, here's the problem. If this were a quadratic, Equation. I, I put my hand up here because a quadratic means there's an x squared term, but not an x cubed term. Then you can factor. We know how to factor. Those are those are pretty easy. We we just do that game right here, and shoot foils. If well, anti foil. Oh, anti -foil. It's, yeah, it's like the opposite of foiling. Or if we can't do that, we always have a big bazooka in our back pocket, right? You guys remember what that bazooka is called? What? Okay, there's this boy, and he's a negative boy, and he's I knew you taught this before. Un yeah, unsure about going to this radical party. And right, right. We, if, if this were a square function and we couldn't factor it because we don't know how, we can use a quadratic equation. It is the bazooka in my pocket. It will always work, but it's, you know, a lot of work. All right, but Sophia's right. She's saying, but that won't work here. The reason why is because... We have a cubic function, and I don't have an equation for the cubic function. There is no cubotic equation. There's only a quadratic equation. So what can we do? Is there anything we can factor? Is there anything that is in all of these terms that I can pull up? She said it. You just raised your hand. Sorry. Let's divide everything by 4. I agree with you. So this divided by 4 is what? Just x cubed, yeah? This divided by here for is negative x, negative three x squared minus x plus three. And I divided, basically I, I divided this whole thing by four. I should also divide the other side by four. But what's zero divided by four? Still zero. So everyone, anyone worried about what I just did? I noticed that there was a factor of 4 in all everything here. So you just took 4 out. So I didn't just subtract 4 out. I divided everything, everything by 4. I divided this by 4, this by 4, this by 4, this by 4, and this by 4. Dividing 4 is just canceling out completely. So it's just going to be... Right, the, right, right. The but threes. 0 divided by 4 is still just... It's 0. Right. Because 0 is... Zero. All right, so, but we're cool with that. <coughs> all right. This, this, to be honest with you, this particular problem takes playing with here. And it's good for you to see this technique performed a little, a few times. All right. Um. Here's what I'm thinking. Do you guys know what the next step is? Not honestly, no. Let's let's do this. I'm gonna. I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. I'm gonna make this x squared, or x cubed minus x minus 3x squared plus 3. Okay. Nothing freaky. Same thing, just move it around. I just move things around, and I'm allowed to do that because it's called the commutative property of, of addition, right? 3 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 3. I can just put it in different orders. Are we cool? What... I'm going to do, I actually did get a diamond's email, um, 
something about you know needing help with certain problems and doing that kind of stuff. Is that what you referring to? Okay. Um, yeah. Let's make sure we address all of those today. Cool. And if you guys can stay late, can you guys stay a little bit late? I know you got to leave at three or whatever. But I'm willing to stay a little bit later than normal to help you guys out. Wait, wait, Mr. Alder. Yeah. You're like, uh, like when, when are you usually at school? Because like I remember I came here yesterday and you were here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday I took a special offsite day. Um, to be honest with you, I was taking a three and a half hour midterm. Yeah, sorry. I was taking a physics midterm exam, and it took me three and a half hours, and I wrote 24 pages, and my hand fell off after. 24? I had to re reattach it. 24 pages? It was 24 pages long, yeah. Six problems, three and a half hours, 24 pages. Six, Six problems? Physics! That makes no sense. Oh my. Yeah. No. <laughs> Don't you guys want to no. major in physics now? No, do you forget that? I'm, I'm, taking, doing, right? I'm taking aerodynamic oh, physics. Gosh. Why? I don't know. Why? It sounded cooler. Alright, anyway, hey, let's go back to this. Let's get back to this. Alright, ready? I gotta go in ten minutes. Here's here's my do you guys do you guys know um do you guys know, know what to do here? What are your thoughts? What is I don't understand what this is. Oh, well, you don't know. I was thinking, could you just like separate it? Yeah, I can kind of see two separate things here. Why don't I pull a three out of here? Why don't I do this? I'm going to think of this as x cubed minus x plus three times negative x squared plus one. What? Okay, you're saying what? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, but I just pulled a three out of here okay. and a three out of here. I just pulling a three out of here makes it negative x squared. I just pulling a three, three out of here, and by pulling a three, I mean dividing a three. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That makes it one. Yeah. If I were to distribute this three back into here, right, then it would be the same thing is right above. Cool? Huh. I'm thinking that I could pull an X out of both of these. I kind of, I like what Cameron's doing is he's kind of saying, well, let's look at these as two separate things almost, even though they're not technically separate. But what I could do is I could pull an X out of that. This would be X times, if I pulled an X out of X cubed, what am I left with? X squared. X squared, because there's two left over x squared minus 1, right? Because if I put this x back in, it would give me exactly what I have yeah, above. Because x is a, is right. a 1. Plus 3 times negative x squared plus 1. Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to do one more piece of trick that you guys are going to be like, wow, that's crazy, but kind of cool. You ready? I'm going to make this a negative 3. In that case, this would be a plus and a minus, right? Because if I put the negative 3 back into here, it would give me a negative x squared, and an, uh, or it would give me a positive x squared and a negative stuff, which is what I needed. Oh, wait, wait. What am I doing? Oh, yeah. If I were to put a negative into here, this would be a negative x squared, which is that, and a positive 1, which is that. All right? Now, here's the trick. Do you see what we can factor now? Oh yeah, the the x square and the minus one. What do you mean? The parentheses. Yes, we could factor the thing inside the parentheses, but there's a bigger trick that I want to show you here. This this is, is going to blow your mind when when you guys re see what I taught you guys last year. Come on, you guys. Was it only last year? I don't I've remember seen this exact thing, thing before. Yeah. All right. I honestly don't want to do that. Oh, you are. 
Uh, I will try to post the review of everything we're doing to, uh, in a practice exam. In fact, today's lecture is basically being recorded so that it is some kind of review for everything that's going to be covered in the practice exam. Um, Jenna is saying exactly right. Jenna is saying this. You get it? Because notice, there is an x squared minus 1 in both of these things, right? So I could factor out an x squared minus 1. If I pulled an x squared minus 1 out of this entire thing, what am I left with? An x, right? And if I pulled an x squared minus 1 out of all of this, I'm left with a 3. Are we cool? All right, Sophia's saying she doesn't get it. Okay, what if I just said this? Sophia, x times a minus 3 times a. Can you factor anything out of here? You can pull out an a, and this would be x minus 3 times a. Correct? Because if I put this a back into here, it would be exactly the same thing. It would be a times x, negative 3 times a. Right? Sophia gets it. Sophia, I understand that. I'm doing the same exact thing here. It's only this time your a is x squared minus 1. It's all that junk in the parentheses. It's the exact same idea. Make sense? All right. Last bit. I can factor this. I think some of you guys were suggesting that I factor this. And I agree with you. Let's do it. x, x. Can you guys tell me what else goes in there? Plus 1. Minus 1. If you foil this out, you find that it's exactly the same thing as that. And this one is an x minus 3. Now, this was all equal to 0, right? So can you tell me the factors right off the bat? What are the zeros of this function? Positive 3, negative 1, positive 1. Positive 3, negative 1, positive 1. Shoots. Boof. We cool? I still don't see how I got the x squared. OK, Lucas is saying, I don't see how you got this thing right here. Yeah, honestly, I'm pretty lost too. OK, all right. Let's do it on the side. x cubed minus x. Is there, is there something you could pull out of this? Is there a something that's in common with both of these? An x. An x. So I'm going to pull one x out of it x times x squared x squared minus one minus one that's where i got it oh i see what um to tell lucas lucas like, saying no i meant how do you get the x squared minus one to oh you're saying how did i do this step right here lucas Okay. All right. I'm gonna. I'm going to. Um, the x squared minus one went right here. Lucas, it's exactly what I showed you before. If I if I gave you this x times a minus three times a, you could pull out an a, and this would be x minus three times a. Wait, where did the x minus three come from? Fine. If I factor this a back into here, what would that be? A x times a. A x. Or a x. Or x a. Doesn't Minus matter. Three a. Minus three a. Minus three a. That's exactly what I meant here. So do you understand how this goes? All right. Lucas, do you understand this part right here? Okay. 
Lucas, all you got to do is say, let A equal. I can let A equal anything I want, right? Why don't I let A equal x squared minus 1? That is almost literally what I have here. From this step to this step. And Jenna suggested it. You know, Mr. Dalton. Lucas is saying, no, I don't know. I'm so frustrated. I don't get it. You guys you guys still need more help with this? Mr. Dalton. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what is that? Like, okay, the, why is there like a minus thing in front of the three? What was that about? Oh, the minus thing in front of the three was... Right underneath, right, right there on your left. Right yeah, 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 I know. The minus thing in front of the three was I had over here, this was a minus x squared plus one, okay? Here's my thoughts on this. If I wanted to... Um, if I wanted to pull out an x squared minus 1 out of both of them, they would have had to have identical things inside the parentheses. And they're not identical inside the parentheses. So for an order. This one is off by a negative sign. If I multiply this entire thing by negative 1, then they would be identical. Right? So that's what I did. Okay. And then where did you get the um, x minus 3? <laughs> This x minus 3 right here? Yeah. It came from this concept right here. <laughs> Just erase the plus on the, in that middle step. If you erase this that, is like, freaking you out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was freaking me out too. There you go. All right, there. Is that better? Okay, but, okay, but if you do... If you were to... Oh, okay. So Maybe I started off with like a super hard problem, but to be honest with you, this was problem number one. What is, what is, what about the one? How did it become a three? Would you like to know a secret? Which one? I got all of these problems straight off of the EO, EOC practice math test. That's why. So, this is about where they are. Do you see how it's like X? X, 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 Where did the three come from? Is it from the in-between? Yeah. So, as long as you multiply both by the same thing, we can just... Take them apart, put them, and then put the two separate ones. Basically, you just put the, two put the ones X. together. All right. So then that three in the center combines with that X. And yeah. X all right. All right. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Is this thing freaking you guys out? Just a little bit. Why don't I change it from a one shot to a two shot? You have two tries. That's more comfortable. Okay. This is worth 52 points. Do you guys have a little more breathing room there? All right. We'll do that. Okay, let's try this one. I'm gonna make up another problem. You ready? Um, let's go with this. I'm gonna go. X plus four to the one third power equals two. Solve for X. First thing, I got to get rid of the one third power. It's called the one third power is called the cube root. So in order to get rid of the one third power or the cube root, I would cube it, right? So I'm going to raise everything to the third power. So this is supposed to be green. Cool. I cube the two as well, right? Because if I cube the left, I better cube the right. So this would be x plus four equals two cubed. Rhymes with gate, eight. Rhymes with date, mate, fate. All right. Um, get a, what is X? Four, good. All right. Hard, not hard, easy, what? What? I'm lost. Geo, you're lost? Okay, you are you lost here? No, I get that. That's yeah, because oh. oh. 
Okay. Because this I was, is you. I was just wondering. I'm just. I was just saying. Don't make me sound that stupid. But no, no. Are you worried about this? Because oh, okay, you, you cubed everything. I understand that. But the one third. All right. All right. Fine. 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 Okay. All right. Fine. When I take an exponent and I raise it to an exponent, this is a rule. Okay. X to the a to the b is equal to x to the a times b. Let me let me elaborate on that, all right? x cubed <coughs> squared, okay, is actually equal to x cubed times x cubed. Can you argue with that? No arguing with that, right? Are we cool with that? x cubed times x cubed. Because x yeah, cubed yeah, squared is x cubed times x cubed. That's what squared yeah. means. You just take the thing and multiply it by itself. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Okay. So no one's complaining about that. Done. All right, sense. good. Stop me if you guys start complaining about things. There's six x's there. Yeah. It's the same as x to the sixth power, right? Right? Yes, no, I don't know. Are you cool? No, that, that makes sense. Okay, so I could have just gone from this step to this step by multiplying the two. Three yeah. times two is six. Done. Nothing freaks you out here. No. But what you're wondering is, well, what the hell does this relate back to here? Yeah. All right, well, I am fine. Okay, I get, I get what happens to the two. X plus four to the one third power to the third power. power is really x plus 4 to the 1 third times 3. So 1 third times 1 third, 1 third. No, 1 third times 3. What is 1 third times 3? Uh, Fine, I'll make it 1 third times 3 over 1. That's the same thing. Everyone's saying my favorite Hispanic Mexican friend's name, and I actually do have a friend who's named this, so I'm allowed to make this joke, I think. Um, Juan. Juan. <laughs> yeah, it's Juan. Huh. Right? You get that? Yeah? The three cancels out with the three? Is one. We cool? Anything to the one power, I can just get rid of this whole thing on this side. So one equals eight. I mean, not one equals eight, but this equals eight. Cool? Okay. Got it. All right, let me write it down. Okay, I'll let you write it down. That's, let's do the next one. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculously cool. All right. You gotta hurry up. You should. You know. You should write this down while we're. I know, but I'm like I'm trying to like figure it out too. Simplifying to... rational function problems. Yeah, sure, we can do no, that. It's four. It's on the test too. <laughs> it is burning. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Let's go over one of those. I I will go over one of those. Yeah. I can see it. Um, I'm gonna do this one. Now, Gino's going to know how to do this one. I hope so. You're on this one. What is that, a 3 or a 2? It's a 32. No, 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 the, the x squared, yeah? Is that x cubed? I mean, squared. Yeah, and that's a square right there. Okay, okay. Okay, From the test. <laughs> All right. What the question is asking is it saying complete the square and you'll get one of these answers? Foil. What is the, how, you know, which one of these is the answer? Okay? You complete the square and you'll get one of these answers. Invite. Which one is it? And how many of you liked doing complete the square? There we go. There we go. Jenna's saying, no, I love what Jenna's saying. She's admitting something. She's saying, can you do complete the square again? Because I sucked at that. Sophia's saying she doesn't like complete the square. You don't mind it. 
Yeah. All right, Cameron. You complete the square, and here's what I'm going to do. All right? Um, <laughs> there's no love for completing the square whatsoever. Okay, fine, fine, fine. <coughs> Let me show you something, all right? Foil. If I complete the square, I'll get this. Or, and, and one way... One way that we can check that is, remember, like we'll, we'll go through and we'll complete the square yeah. and we'll get an answer. And then if we get an answer and we want to check to see if it works, what, what do we do? We've, right. If we get an answer, we'll just take, take all our, an our answer, foil it out, and see if it gives us the same thing back. So if this is a multiple yeah, choice right. test, why don't we just foil these guys out? I'm sorry, there's a square here. Why don't we just foil these guys out and see which one gives us the same thing as the problem? <laughs> right? So, complete the square. All you got to do is say, no, I hate completing the square, but I can foil like a beast. So that's what you need to do. Foil. Uh, that's what you do. All right. X minus 8 squared equals, I'm going to do the first one, ready? x squared, x minus 8 squared equals 5, all right, so that's x squared minus 64 equals 5, okay? Then I'm going to subtract 64 onto both sides, x squared equals 69, was it? 59. You said 64 minus 5, right? So that's 59. Oh, yeah, no, no, this is plus 5, so this is 69. Oh, it's a bit, oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that. Yeah, we cool? Everyone cool with that? Yeah. Anyone lost yet? Lucas says yes. Sophia says yes. I'm wondering how many I can get people to say yes. Wait, lost? Or like they're lost? Do you guys agree? With, everyone agree with that? Everyone agree? Come on, everyone. Agree. Uh, Sophia oh, said, I got it. Yeah, got no, it. yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Do you get it? Boot to the face! Boot to the face! You and you and you! Boot to the face! All of you! What do you mean? Uh, dudes, come on! No, this one guy said... X minus 8 squared is not X squared minus 64. That is literally the thing I told you. If you do, <laughs> I will boot you in the face. Boot to the face. God. I've told you that multiple times. Yes, Jenna, please boot yourself in the face. X minus 8 squared is X minus 8 times X minus 8. You foil that out, and you'll get X squared minus 8X minus 8X plus 64. This is X squared minus 16X plus 64. Subtract 64 to both sides. Well, wait, 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 wait. We'll get there. We'll get there. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying that X minus 8 squared is not X squared minus 64. Yeah. Well, you confuse us with it all day. Your, Why? Your words, Why? you were sounding like it was so truthful. So you got somebody standing there trying to trick you, and you're going to be tricked. You're our teacher. <laughs> you're like, wait a second. I was fooled because he said something. Dude, if you know it, then, then you know it. Uh, we doesn't we're repeating you because we don't know it. <laughs> Right, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Boot to the face. Don't ever do that, okay? Please, please. Next time I, I say, oh, yeah, there's a square, square, square here, there's a square there. Yeah, okay, don't ever do that again. The reason why Mr. Dalde is so ridiculous with his antics is because... Um, the reason why I'm so ridiculous with my antics is because later on, you're going to remember... You're going to be doing math, calculus, or whatever, and you're going to be like, oh, I got to do this, I got to do this. Oh, wait a second. Boot to the face. I better not screw that up because someone's going to track me down, find my address, and boot me in the face with their dirty rubber slipper. So All right, anyway, this is equal to five. Okay? Oh, really? Yes. Wait, no. Yeah, it is. It's well, equal I mean, five. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, equal five. So the left-hand side was all this equals one. All right. 
So I'm just going to go x squared minus 16x equals negative 59, right? Did, am I frozen? Isn't that, wasn't that 64 supposed to disappear when becoming a 5? 64 is supposed to disappear when becoming a 5. What are you talking five. about? Wait, wait, are we, are we not doing, oh, we're doing, we're doing from A, right? I'm just doing the first one. Never mind. All right, you ready? All right. Never mind. So, does this look like that? That's good. I, no, but I can multiply everything by 2, right? I can do 2 on everything. So let's go 2x squared minus 32x equals negative 118. Yeah? I multiplied by 2. I can just multiply everything by 2. That's, that's totally allowed, right? I didn't change anything. The reason why I multiplied everything by 2 is just because I kind of want to see a direct comparison. So obviously, this thing. Oh, oh, Sophia's saying, why did you multiply by 2? Um. I agree with you. I think what you guys are seeing is you guys are thinking, oh, hey, there, wasn't, there wasn't a 2 there. There was a 2 here. You could multiply everything by 2 here, but not over here. I don't know. I just see like... I'm allowed to do that as long as I do it to everything, right? I could multiply everything by 2. That's fine. No one's going to complain. All right, fine. Here, here. Why don't we do this then? Let's not multiply this by 2. But before we try to compare our thing to our original problem, why don't we simplify our original problem by <coughs> dividing everything by 2? Why don't we do that? x squared minus 16x equals 5. Okay. This okay. Be so does this look like that? That's no, really that's what I'm asking. No. Right. All right. Lucas is saying, try C. Yeah. All right. I got a suggestion for you, Lucas. Why don't you try C? You can do it just as well as I can. All you got to do is foil. Just don't foil it wrong. Anyway, I'm just making that as a suggestion to try B or C or D. Probably. But Gino wants me to tell you that it's probably the one that you want to do is maybe, I don't know. I have no idea. I can't tell you at all. I'm not going to tell you what the right answer is. Be there is no wins because I mean, yeah, I mean, it'd just be too easy for you. Easy. <laughs> All right. Anyway, moving on. We didn't even find the answer. I showed you how to do it. I know, but I mean, what if what if they? Yeah. What if curiosity is hitting them? You know what? If curiosity is hitting them, then they should solve it themselves. Ooh, we'll build that more. All right, here we go. Here we go. Um, I asked you guys to plug in some points and find uh, and make a plot, and then I asked you to find the minimum of that function. Okay. Uh, let's see. Rational, rational forms. Let me see if I can do this. Um, X squared, X to the fourth power. Minus one over x plus. All right, let's do that. Okay. Are you any good at factoring this? Do you know how to factor that? Is this another thing that's going to be on the test? Yes, this will probably be. I can't tell you this is going to be on the test, but something similar to this. Well, I mean, like this types of. Uh, um, no, you can factor this. Equations. Yeah. 
You can factor the top, right? Well, in, in, in rational functions and all of that kind of stuff, rational expressions and simplifying that, them, what you do is you, you factor the heck out of the, the stuff on top, you factor the heck out of the stuff on the bottom, you kind of keep them separate, and then you put it all together and see what kills, you know, what, what on top kills the bottom. bottom. Okay? There is a formula I want you to remember, so write this one down. A squared minus B squared is equal to... C squared. Nope. C. No, that's A squared plus B squared. This is A squared minus B squared is equal to... You can factor these. Come on, I know you can. A, A plus... Yeah. Yeah, B, very, very B. Right? <laughs> this is called the difference of squares. This is called the difference of squares formula or whatever equation. If there's a plus in the middle here, you can't factor it. There is no formula for it. A squared plus B squared, that's something different. Okay? But if there's a minus here, that's something you can factor. If you don't believe me, foil this out and you'll realize you'll get that. <laughs> we cool? Can't be good. So I'm saying is, yes, Sophia, I think you're on the right track. So what I'm saying here is, if you see a perfect square minus a perfect square, and do you guys know what a perfect square is? It's like nine. Nine is a perfect square. Four. Good. It's a perfect square. 16, 25, 64, 25, 64, x squared, 81, yeah, 81, x to the 6th power, because x to the 6th power is a perfect square, right? It's x cubed times x cubed, right? Like, this, I can think of two things I can multiply by itself to get x squared. I can multiply an x times an x. I can think of two things to multiply it by itself to get exactly this. x cubed times x cubed is the same as x to the sixth. Are we cool? So darn, if only we see a perfect square minus a perfect square. Is one a perfect square, by the way? Can you think of a number that you can multiply by itself to get the number one. One, just one. That works? Well, I guess it is. A so it's a perfect square. Yeah. One is a perfect square. OK. So I have a perfect square minus a perfect square. So Sophia is suggesting we do this. All right, fine. The top is going to be x squared, x squared, plus minus 1. one. You see that? Another perfect square. Oh, whoa, 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 Cameron's doing something in advance here. He's saying, wait a second, wait a second. We got another perfect square thing going on. Cameron, you want to take it? Oh, okay. <coughs> Good, awesome. Any questions for Cameron? I want him to field the questions on this. Oh yeah, that's right, I forgot to say. Um, this whole thing, this is just the numerator, right? The whole thing was divided by x plus one. I, I forgot to tell you that, right? But remember, we take the, we take the, the top and we factor it out as best as we can. We take the bottom and factor it out as best as we can. And then we kill things on top and bottom that are the same and see what, what's left over. There we go. Oh, by the way, I got a question, Cameron. Why did you make this? Why did you back to this? Because it's not minus a perfect square. Ah, because it's not a perfect square minus another perfect square. It's a perfect square plus a perfect square. And there's no such thing as the sum of squares. There is a such thing as a difference of squares, and that's the formula here. So, so I want you to see this and recognize that immediately. So all we're left with is x um, squared plus 1 and x 
minus one, yeah. X squared plus one times X minus one. And that's our answer. That's our answer. Yeah. And I think that when I ask you to plug this into the computer, you need to foil this out for me. Um, or something. I forgot. I forgot exactly how I put it in there. So make sure. I'm going to check. Double check. Can we, can we do another one of these? Uh, can we do one, another one of these? They're just... Uh, okay. I'll tell you what. I'll try... I'll try my best to try to make up one off the top of my head. Go for it. They're really hard because you gotta like, you gotta foil a whole bunch of stuff all over the place. Um, give me a second. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not very good at just making these up off the top of my head, which kind of gives you a hint as to the problem that I just solved for you. And I said, I'm gonna make up one that is just like the one on the test. And I just told you now, I'm not really good at making them up off, off, right offhand. All right. All right. Um, let me let me make it. x squared minus sixteen over our. Uh, times x cubed or x squared plus eight minus okay. sorry but no plus sixteen. Minus 8x divided by um, x minus 4 squared. Ooh, I, I see you something already. Okay, all right, good. All right, let's try that. Oh. Um, all right, Gino sees something. Go. What do you see? Okay, so x mm -hmm. minus 4, we can make it x minus 4, x minus 4 without the square, right? And then... Yeah, sure. Yeah. But not helping to... Oh, yeah, okay, yeah well, I'm saying we can cancel it out. Yes, we could. Because yeah. uh, the x squared minus 16, we can... Because, uh, you know, six, uh, 4 times oh, 4 is 16. Three. So it's going to be... Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can I show my students the green flame? Yeah. <laughs> Look, everyone, we made green fire. How did you make green fire? Uh, borax and antifreeze. No alcohol. And alcohol. And alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do with this? Cool. Uh, I'm doing the, uh, just an introduction to elements lab. So halogens, when they, yeah, you know, make salts when they they, they burn different with colors. Metals, they burn different colors. And that that's a good. So that's boron. I feel like you could develop this into an alcohol. awesome forensic mm -hmm. science lab, so right? <laughs> Where you're burning things and figuring out the chemical compound of them. That always takes more work for us teachers, by the way, just in case you guys are wondering. Why do my teachers do more forensic science lab? Because it's so much work. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty cool. Anyway. Did they see it? Can they see it on there? Can you guys see? Can you guys see the green flame? Try to pick it up and aim it, aim it down. Oh, right Try to put it over that. <laughs> Try to be over the flame. <laughs> yeah. No, they said they can metals. see. <laughs> <laughs> they can see, but everything's just starting to droop. <laughs> it's because the lens is burned. All right. Okay. Wait, what, the, borax and antifreeze? Oh, yeah. It's a teaspoon of borax and a quarter cup of that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
Okay, all right, Gino. Yes. What do you say? On the roll. Then the X, uh, the X16 could be uh, just X4 and X minus 4 and X minus 4. Ah, uh, Gino says. Oh, wait, wait. So if you did. If you did a different ratio, then it wouldn't. It didn't work? If you screwed up the ratios, it didn't work? Yeah, when I didn't add enough methanol, then it didn't work. Wow. That's that's interesting. All right. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's back to this. Okay. Ready? Right? Yeah. This x squared minus 16 is x plus 4 times x minus 4. Mm -hmm. That can cancel out. Yeah. So one of the, one of those at least cancel. Bye bye. So one of these at least. Yeah. We still got to deal with that. So let's let's deal with that. Um. Okay. Um, can you foil that or fact, factor that? They're all divisible by two. They're all divisible by two. Well, I mean, no. like the eight and sixteen. Eight and sixteen are no, but you can factor it, foil it, right? Yeah. That's x minus four, or that's times x minus, minus four. four. Yeah. Oh, one of those pencils out here. So are you left with x plus 4 and x minus 4? It would be x plus 4 times x minus 4. Which, I, if I were to factor it together, or you know, foil it together, it would be x squared minus 16. But either one is correct. Both of them are correct, right? Yeah. But notice that what I just realized is, <laughs> see this right here? Is x minus 4 times x minus 4? And I had an x minus 4 squared. I didn't think this through, obviously. But you could just cancel those out. And your answer is x squared minus 16. Oh, yeah. I can see that. As soon as, as soon as Gino told me, hey, that x minus 4 squared is x minus 4 times x minus 4. And then I, when I said the words, yeah, but that doesn't really help. I said those words, and I looked at it, and I said, no, nope, it does. Because if you were smart, smart enough, you would have said, oh, and if I fact or if I foil, foil this, the top part, it would be exactly same, that, same. Yeah. and I could just cancel those out. <laughs> and then my answer would have been x squared minus sixteen. But you got the same answer doing the same thing. Just we took longer. Do you guys see how like my brain can only come up with like sucky problems? Because they're hard. They're, you got to think of if you're asking me to make up a problem, I have to think of all the factors of this thing. You know, combine them all in my head and then write down a problem for you to do. It's too and then hopefully it all comes out right, for, you know, so we don't screw it up. So anyway, math teacher's got to be smart. Which is not to say, like, oh, look how smart I am, but I'm just saying, you know. All right, here we go. What else do we got? Oh. Here's, so you can't get it out now? We have covers. No, we have we have something you put on top of this. Oh, mother. Is it in there with all the? Uh, well, just get a bigger cru get another big crucible and just put it right on top. All right. Um. Here. Graph this. Okay. What kind of what kind of graph is this going to produce? Yeah. It's going to be, produce a parabola. Now, is this parabola going to be opening up or down? And that was from just the method. Down because of the negative. It's going to be opening down because of that negative. Yeah. 
Is this thing vertically stretched like a gummy bear or is it vertically compressed like a gummy bear? I forget how it works. It's vertically Why stretched. Is that? Why, is that again? Why is that, Gino asks? Because fractions make it big. If the A is a fraction, it makes it uh, stretched. Because oh. this is not a fraction or a decimal. If this is a number smaller than one, then your scaling, vertical scaling factor, will actually be Compressed. compressing it. But if it's a higher... You're taking a gummy bear and you're pushing it in, making it fatter, you know? But I don't, and I always make this point, I don't like to think of things horizontally, you know? Like, it would produce a, a, a parabola that is, if it were, you know, compressed, it's gonna be fatter like that. But I always think of it as the gummy bear being squished like that. And the reason being, and, and now, now I can tell the story to say, you guys understand why I make such a big deal out of that story. Because that same A factor is in our exponential functions, it's in our cubic functions, it's in quartic functions, it's in all of these things. That It plays the same role if you think of it as vertical stretching or compressing. Not necessarily the case with horizontal things. It doesn't make sense to me. All right. So the higher the number, the more vertical. Uh, the higher the number, the more you are torturing this parabola Stretch. by stretching them out. Yeah. In fact, if this number were super big, it would almost look like it's like almost. Yeah. On in the fact, end. if it were if it were infinity, it would look like this. Right. It'd be so steep, it just looked like a vertical line. So we cool with that. Mm -hmm. What does this negative four do? That's our x-intercepts. This is our, no, not, don't think of it as x-intercept. It moves the whole parabola, the vertex, to the right four units. This one we know it moves up and down, right? The seven. You know that that moves the whole graph upside down, up and down. Because I'm taking this graph and I'm adding seven. I'm pushing everything up by seven. So I know that this moves my parabola up and down. This moves my problem right and left. And remember, when moving things right and left, when so I'm talking about quadratics and almost any of these things, when moving things right and left, it does kind of the opposite of what you expected it to do. This looks like it would move left four, but it actually moves right four because it's in the minus. We've seen that many times, right? I don't have to go into that. All right. So if I were to graph this, I would just say, all right, so the right four, up seven, right here, upside down graph, and vertically stretched, so something like that. Cool? Yes, this negative is built into this equation, but I like just kind of looking at it straight like this. Anyway, um, there's going to be a few problems that are similar to that require you to look at a, a, a graph and, and think of it in your head. Look at an equation and say, this is what the graph means in my head. And that's not that hard. It sounds hard, but it's not. Um, it looks like there's, oh, I know why. I was like, it looks like there's 43 problems, but I told you there's only 26. But the reason why is because I think I skipped some numbers. Uh, there's 26 or anything. What is that? There's 26 problems. Yeah. Yeah, there's 26 problems, even though it's numbered 43 because I skipped some problems. All right. Here we go. Let's try this. Um, I'm going to draw a graph, and I'm going to say this. What kind of graph is that? What kind? Yeah. It's a parabola. A parabola. It has a degree of what? A degree is the number in the exponent. It's the highest it can be is a square, right? It's like 4x squared or 3x squared or whatever. Square, it's degree two. What kind of graph is this? Mm. 
Um, Sophia, I think there might be one. I'm not sure. Actually, it's not that I'm not sure. It's just I don't want to tell you. I, you should be able to do something like that. You should be able to hang with that. All right. This one's a cubic function, OK? Um, what about? This one. What degree is this? It's degree seven. That's what it's called, degree seven. I. You, you, it, there's probably some name to it, but I have no idea what it is. Luke is the same five. How many bumps does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it has to have a degree seven. Okay, no, everyone's saying, why is it degree five? Well, okay, fine. Remember, you guys told me this is a cubic function. How many bumps does a cubic function have? Two. Two bumps making it to the third degree. How many bumps does a parabola have? One. One bump making it to the second degree. We keep this pattern going. How many bumps does this snake have? It has six bumps, but it's to the seventh degree. It's to the seventh degree because it's got six bumps. Got it? Cool. Um, let me do another one for you. And I think that I'm going to do another one. And uh, I think I'm going to do another rational functions one because uh, uh, Jenna is saying that she really hates these things. And remember, I'm, I'm not going to do the exact same one on the test. Okay. What is the difference of x and What is the difference of this? It's x squared minus 4x. Oh, this is an and symbol. Right. And. OK. If I ask you, what is the difference of 3 and 5, what would you say? 2. How would you get 2? Yes. 3 plus 2 plus 5, 5 minus 3 is 3. You just took the 5 and you minus the 2. So I ask you, what is the difference of this junk and that junk? What would you do? You just take this then, minus that one, right? Mm -hmm. So let's do it. 2x minus 2 over x minus 2. Oh, no. Over x squared minus 4x minus 5 minus x over x minus 5. These are, these are exactly the problems that Jenna is saying. I really suck at these. OK. Factor everything. Can I factor 2x minus 2? I actually, to be honest with you, I like these. These are like a puzzle to me. Can I factor 2x minus 2? Ah, Sophia is suggesting I pull out a 2. Yeah, of course. There's a 2 in both of them. 2 times x minus 1. Gino, are we good? Does your brain hurt? A little bit. Um, do you understand this? Are you pulling out the... I pulled out a 2. What I mean by pull out a 2 is not, I'm not subtracting a 2. I'm right. dividing it with a 2. In here. Right. Not here. Can we factor this? I'm not sure, but we can sure try. x, x. What are the symbols that are going to go here? Is it going to be a plus plus, a minus minus? Minus minus. Minus plus. Plus minus minus plus. The same thing. They're opposites. You know that because of that negative, right? You guys remember factoring. And then uh, someone's suggesting a 1 and a 5. I agree with that. OK, good. Can I factor this anymore? 
right, now we're here. Can I factor x? No. This is still x. Can I factor x minus 1? Not really. Maybe that's x minus 1. Or x minus 5, I'm sorry. All right. Now what do I do? Common denominator. How do I make a common denominator? Ooh, we can cancel out x plus 1 and x plus 1, so then the common denominator would be x nope, minus 1. Nope, you cannot no. cancel out because that's an x minus 1, that's an x plus 1. Also plus, never mind. Never mind. So V is saying multiply by x plus 1. What do you mean? Oh, multiply x plus 1 on top and bottom on the right-hand side. So you're suggesting this, Sophia. Now, why would you do that? Good job. Did you see it, Gino? Now I have the same exact denominators. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Do you understand why I did an x plus 1 divided by x plus 1? So we can get... Denominator. Yes, this makes a common denominator, but I'm not allowed to just go and I'm not allowed to multiply this thing by anything except the number one. I'm allowed to uh, multiply by the number one because multiplying things by the number one doesn't change jack. Right? Guess what? This is a secret code for the number one because it's the same thing divided by the same thing. Right? You all right? Your brain all right? Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, 2x minus 1 times negative x squared. All right, I'm, I'm just going to do it like this. x times x plus 1 all over x plus 1. We cool? Anyone confused? All right. I'm going to just, even though I just factored this thing out, I'm going to distribute all of this stuff up on top. So I've got 2x minus 2 minus x squared plus x. Sophia, you're saying can't do that. Can't do what? Oh, cancel out the plus. Sophia wanted me to cancel out the x plus 1s, but you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. But everyone cool with this step that I did here? Okay. Because I did it wrong. Just mm -hmm. wrong. Thank you. Know. This is supposed to be a negative. It takes some real genius to actually do things wrong on purpose. Because then I got to think, oh, I'm going to do it right. No, I'm going to actually do this wrong. Actually, you know what? That sounded so conceited. I'm sorry about it. Do you understand why that's a negative over here? How come? Because the x you're distributing it with is negative. This is a negative x. So I want to <laughs> distribute it in this negative x x times, negative x times x is negative x squared. Negative x times 1 is negative x. We cool? Be careful with that kind of stuff. All right. Um, I'm going to work up here. I'm sorry. I don't have any room. Is it right if I make this negative x squared plus x minus 2? Yes, plus. Why plus? Oh, good. I'm glad you're calling me on stuff. Oh, no, I But I didn't mess you up this time. No. Yeah. Yeah, I messed up. I tricked you by actually doing it right this time. <laughs> no, I messed up on yeah, my yeah. paper. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Like my students get get to the point where they're like, 
wait, is he going to mess with us? Is he, is he going to mess with the now? Is he, is he screwing with us now? All right, anyway. Um, I'm going to make this negative 1 times x squared minus x plus 2. How come I took pulled out that negative one? I'll tell you why. Because I'm not used to factoring something like that with a negative in front of the x squared. I, it, it, it freaks me out. So if I divide by negative one, then factoring that is much easier for me. Is that all right? Does that go with you? Um, so V is saying, yeah, and on top, what are you going to have? Okay, that's x minus 1 times x minus, what did you say? No, it's not that. No, it's not that. So he was wrong. Can we factor that on top? I got an x and an x. I have a minus and a minus. Two and a one. Good. I'm switching. <clears throat> yeah. I'll be honest with you, that's the best we could do. Yeah, what's up? I was just going to get the minus two. And the minus ones. What do you mean put, switch? I would put them in opposite. Oh, what do you mean opposite? What are you talking about? I would put that just. Oh, you would put this negative back in, and then you would trade places, put the negative back in. That way, we can cancel the x plus one there. You won't be able to cancel out the x plus one because when you distribute this negative back in here, that makes it one minus x. It doesn't make it one plus x. I, I kind of I kind of wish that I that I made up the problem so that I structured it so that way we could cancel these things out and then we could say, look how easy it is, you know, look how simple this thing became. But I think I just screwed up and didn't actually give you the right Wait. You know, not the right one, but it, it's just it just happens to be one of those ones that doesn't cancel. That's funny. Yo. But the pro the answer is actually right down there, right? Or is nope, it? the answer's right here. That's not the answer. So it's just that. Yeah. How can you tell when you're done? I love that question. My answer to that is this. Can I factor the top at all? Nope. Can I factor the bottom any simpler than it is? Nope. Can I cancel anything out? No. Nope. You're done. I'm done. And then my other answer to that is, how can you tell when you're done? Experience. You just do enough of these problems, you know when you're done. I think I see that a lot in, um... oh, wait, wait, Sophia's, or no, Lucas is saying we screwed up something. What are you talking about, Lucas? X minus two, X minus one. Oh, oh, you're right. I don't think I factored this thing correctly. X and an X. Minus and a minus. Let me check something. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. What? I screwed it up. Sorry. Uh. 
I'll tell you how I screwed it up. I looked at the problem, and it's very small written. And I couldn't see it correctly. And this was supposed to be a plus. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Okay, do fine. it over. Oh. Fine. I'll yeah. do it over. I'll do it over yeah. for you. I'll do it. And I'll tell you what. I'll do it speed run, and I won't even mess with you. How's that? Thank you. Okay. Oh, no. All right, ready? I, I, I. 2x plus 2 over x squared minus 4x minus 5 minus x over x plus 5. We already know how to factor that. Turns out we don't really even need to. I can make it 2x plus 2 over x what was that? X. Uh, it was plus one, yeah? Yes. Yeah, okay. Minus x over x minus five. I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by x plus one. Cool. I'll be honest with you, I could have done this by just going through and just changing negative here and there and all that kind of stuff, but I might as well just. Erase the whole board, resolve the problem. It gets you really good at this stuff. Um, now I have a common denominator of x plus 1 times x minus 5. On top, I have a 2x plus 2 minus x squared minus x. And I was thinking about making that a plus x and see if you guys would catch the mistake, but I told you I wouldn't screw with you. So um, this is negative x squared plus x minus, or plus 2. Are we good? Okay. This is negative 1 times x squared minus x minus 2. Just double checking. Just double checking. Is this different from what we had before? Um, let's see. Yeah. It is? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. The other time we had a plus 2 here, huh? Yeah, we had a plus 2. Oh. Whew. I was going to make sure, because if it was the same thing, it would have been a jump. All right. Um, negative 1 times x. x. I do. Oh, what time? Two. Oh, we missed it? No, it's at 3. Yeah, I know. Three. I know, it's 3. Oh. Yeah, it's 2. Oh, okay. I had okay. a feeling huh. I was like, right. <laughs> I feel like I still left already. <laughs> okay, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Fire drill. Okay, but we got to finish this. Okay, ready? Um. Plus one minus two. Cool. Now we can do this. In fact, would it be all right with you if I just did this? Two minus x over x minus five. I switched these around. All right, you guys. I have to end class. I'm sorry. There's a fire. Drew. Drew. No, actual fire. Make it exciting. So you lost There was there was green fire. Wait, is that the that's the answer? Yeah. That's the answer. All right. Cool. No, science didn't burn the building down.